If you want a detailed contract, you'll get it with K Hovnanian. But if you're the type of person where you like to drop in and sort of monitor the progress in person, you can forget it. This one's not gonna be a good fit for you. You're allowed all of two site visits to the home while it's under construction. And anything beyond that is an act of default. Yeah, you heard me right. An act of default to visit the home you are buying. The contract puts it this way. It states, visits to the home under construction are limited to two visits before the pre-occupancy inspection. They continue saying, a violation of this section shall constitute a default under this agreement and a trespass. And if you're wondering what an act of default entails, well, they're kind enough to spell that one out for us too. Paragraph 11 of the contract states, if purchaser is in default, then seller may retain the earnest money deposit and terminate this agreement and sell the property to someone else. Basically, don't try to visit your house too many times or they could end up keeping your deposit and selling it to somebody else. I mentioned that their contracts are detailed, okay? And they definitely are. Like we recently negotiated a new build with them and the contract was 116 pages long. All right, we're talking 28 paragraphs of the actual contract, half a dozen addendums, and a full 62 pages spelling out every last detail of the home. I mean, so many details with everything from like drawer pulls to the tub faucet to the height of the toilet. And of course, it includes all of the structural components as well. So if you're someone who thrives on getting that every last detail, k Nanian could be a great fit for you, but you have to remember you're only allowed two site visits during the whole construction process. So the question is, are they credible enough to get it right if you're not allowed to go there? Like what kind of company is k Nanian? Well, they're a very large one, according to their website. In fact, k builds homes all across the country. You can find their homes in Arizona, California, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Maryland, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Texas, Virginia, Washington, D.C., and West Virginia. They even say on their website that Havnanian Enterprises, Inc. is one of the nation's largest home builders. Now, it's not surprising considering how long the company has been around. Here's what they say about their history. In 1959, Kevork S. Havnanian emigrates to U.S. and starts home building company with three brothers out of a trailer in Toms River, New Jersey. When it comes to their locations around Dallas, Fort Worth, you can find communities with K-Hob in all kinds of places, right? We're talking Fate, Forney, Heath, Howe, Levon, Rowlett, Roy City, Sherman, Van Alstine, and Wataga. Now, I would hope that after 60 years of business, the company would have at least some awards, and K. Havnanian does not disappoint. In 2023, Havnanian Enterprises receives two U.S. Department of Energy 2023 awards for building energy efficient homes. It continues, the Housing Innovation Awards recognize leading home builders from across the country who are constructing zero energy ready homes. They were also named Maryland's most prestigious new home and remodeling award program. Plus the Maryland Building Industry Association announced the Maryland Award of Excellence winners stating that these awards are designed to recognize the industry's best craftsmanship and innovation in new homes. And if you scroll down, you see Kai Havnanian was named as the top large volume builder there. Okay, so they're a huge company that's been around for a long time and they're also highly acclaimed. Is there anything you should be aware of when it comes to committing to a K. Havnanian contract? Well, they have the normal predatory elements we see with so many of our new construction contracts. For example, they have the convenience clause. And while it's not the worst I've seen, okay, it's still in there. Many builders will have a clause that allows them to cancel that contract for any reason or no reason at all. They can cancel the contract without providing a reason. Here's how K. Ha phrases their convenience clause, okay? This is what it says. In the event that any dispute shall arise between seller and purchaser prior to closing concerning any issue relative to this agreement, seller shall have the right upon written notice to purchaser to terminate this agreement. So at least they leave it up to potential disputes. Their termination policy states, upon termination by seller pursuant to this section, seller shall return the earnest money deposit to purchaser and shall pay to purchaser the sum of $500. So that right there, there's your convenience clause. How about if you can't close on time? Well, this is what the k Hob contract has to say. If purchaser asks to delay the closing date for any reason, 
including due to delays caused by purchaser's lender and seller agrees to same, then purchaser agrees to pay seller an extension fee equal to $500 times the number of calendar days from the scheduled closing date until the extended closing date, any purchaser will forfeit any incentives applied by seller. Now to me, of all of the less than appealing contract clauses, all right, this one takes the cake. And it is super common for builders to offer like a 10 to $15,000 closing cost incentive, which you could forfeit if you can't close on time. Plus you have to pay $500 per day for a late closing. I mean, this is definitely up there among the most extreme late fee penalties we've seen. How about their terms on appraisal shortages? Well, to keep it short and sweet, they will not reduce the price of the home. Here's how the contract reads. Purchaser acknowledges that the final appraisal of the property may be less than the purchase price. In the event that the appraisal is lower than the purchase Purchase price, purchaser shall increase the earnest money deposit or pay the difference between the appraisal and the purchase price in cash at closing. Purchaser further acknowledges that seller is not required to reduce the purchase price of the property if the appraisal is lower than expected. When it comes to property tax finality, they say that taxes, including any payments in lieu of real estate taxes, assessments, including special assessments, association fees, and water and sewer charges are to be apportioned at closing. Now, we always like to bring this up because there's often a huge difference between what the builder's prorated taxes are at closing and what they should have been. And there are some builders who are willing to do an adjusted proration after closing, but KHOV isn't one of them. So that's definitely something that you wanna keep in mind. All right, but let's talk about their houses and communities for a minute, okay? Do they fit for what you're looking for? Well, their price range starts out in the mid to high 300s and ends at just under 800,000. On that lower end of the spectrum, you can find homes out in Royce City at the Creekshaw community. K Hobbs homes in the neighborhood go for anywhere from about like 370,000 to just under 500,000. The community is around 45 minutes from downtown Dallas if you're looking at a daily commute. Creekshaw has 39 active listings right now with 11 of those being K Hobnanian. In the past 90 days, there are only 12 closed sales in all of Creekshaw. So you have 39 actives, only 12 sold, and they're closing in an average of 79 days on the market. So you have exposure and you have fairly long days on the market. KHOV is joined by David Weekly and Highland Homes at Creekshaw, which is an interesting mix because Highland and KHOV are typically somewhat higher end builders. So it's interesting that they're both building a more affordable product here. Usually when Highland builds a more affordable product, it's because it's on a smaller 40 foot lot and it is the case here as well. Uh, I took a look at closed sales and homes are selling at an average of 95% of the list price. So this is not the place that you would go in with a full price offer. Only two of the 12 homes actually paid the full list price. The median sales price in Creekshaw is 395,000. Now, when we compare that to the active listings, all right, we see Kahav Nanian is listed at a median price of 415,000. David Weekly is listed at a median price of 410,000. Highland homes are listed at a median price of 425,000. So you can see that they're not getting their list price because your median sales price is 395,000. So you have three builders active in Creekshaw right now, all building a similarly priced product and all of them showing some flexibility in price. In fact, on every one of KHOV's active listings, they have had major price reductions. I mean, they're not alone either. Of the 39 homes listed, 30 of them have had price reductions. So hopefully that gives you an idea of market conditions at Creekshaw because it is looking like some good opportunities there. But what does Creekshaw itself have to offer? Well, when it comes to amenities, they have quite a bit to offer. It has a beautiful pool with shaded areas, 
a pond and fountain, a playground, and some nice open trails and green space. The local school district, it's also pretty good. Royce City Independent School District is A-rated by the Texas Education Agency and greatschools.org shows that 11% of students are scoring above average. So what type of homes are they building here? Well, homes in the community range like from your classic one story with traditional brick, vaulted roof, some nice stone and a covered porch to more of a modern one story where you're gonna find some more versatile options to choose from. Uh, buyers can also choose a two-story floor plan with multiple brick color and stone combinations. They really tend to make a statement and put a lot of focus on their front doors. So some very nice combinations there. So if you like what you see, with Kehov Nannian and you're in that lower price range, you may wanna check out Creekshaw, just don't go in paying full price. Now let's take a look at the other end of the spectrum, Kehov Nannian's highest price community. You're gonna find it on the east side of Dallas in Rowlett. The name is Sapphire Bay and it is definitely a very unique master plan community. I like that Kehov Nannian is building here because it's a different look than most of the homes they build. Uh, we do need to talk about Sapphire Bay though because it is an interesting community that isn't anything more than it is. All right, it's changed hands several times. And if you look at their main website, it advertises like these spectacular bells and whistles, like a resort, a plaza with office, retail and restaurant space, a marina, and even a surf village. The site describes how at the surf village alone, nothing will beat watching the sunset as the waves roll in, crashing along the shores of a 600 foot long surf lagoon at Sapphire Bay's surf village. It continues saying, the attraction is poised to become an iconic lifestyle experience complete with a state-of-the-art surf club, surely to become a magnetic pulse for the development. And they don't stop there either. According to the website, the experience is deeper than just the waves. The surf village at Sapphire Bay will transcend visitors into paradise with white sand beaches and luscious landscape, three resort-style pools, two swim-up bars, a lazy river, and multiple outdoor beach gathering spaces for relaxation and games. So quite the claim, right? And if they didn't already have your attention, all right, they continue. Chase loungers, day beds, and private cabanas will complete the day under the Texas sun with dedicated wait staff serving both local and tropical favorites you'll want time and time again. Now, in this case, the pictures don't do it justice because that's pretty much all there is, all right? Just pictures. In her article, All That Glitters Is Not Sapphire, Sandra Barnage describes how the project first started in 2015 with Donahue Development at the helm. Around 2018, it was spearheaded by Bayside Land Partners. By 2019, the Sapphire Bay land development comes on the scene. By 2023, an apartment tower known as The View finally goes under construction only to catch fire at the end of 2023. So there is just a lot going on and not going on when it comes to Sapphire Bay. But I have to say, while the Sapphire Bay website makes all of those grandiose claims of paradise, Kehov Nannian doesn't initially claim what isn't there. Like on their website, they describe amenities as waterfront walking trails and access to Lake Ray Hubbard. So that is true. But then if you scroll down, they do show more about what isn't there and describe it as if it is. So it is kind of deceptive. They encourage you to relax at the lagoon and catch waves at the surf village. Well, I would love to do you know all of those things, except they don't exist yet. Now, the market conditions at Sapphire Bay are completely different from what we saw at Creekshaw. I think there's overall maybe a hesitation to commit to Sapphire after all the instability it's had. When I do a search on Sapphire Bay over the past two years, Kehoff Nannian is literally the only builder showing sales. So they're building a unique product and they're building out there basically on their own. If Sapphire Bay does come into fruition the way it's been advertised to be, all right, these homes could have tremendous value as the front runners. Now, right now, homes are selling at around 98% of the list price at an average of 57 days on the market. Your average sales price is 766,000. The Kehoff Nanian homes at Sapphire Bay are located on the west side of Lake Ray Hubbard. The community is about 25 minutes from downtown Dallas. 
The local school district is Garland ISD. Now let me tell you a little bit about Garland schools because this is important. Garland ISD is B rated by the Texas Education Agency. Great schools gives them a fairly good score showing 24% of students as scoring above average. But here, here's the really cool thing about Garland ISD, all right? It's an open school district. And that means you can request to enroll your child in any of Garland schools, regardless of individual zone. Garland has 17 different schools with seven out of 10 ratings or higher. And being in an open school district means you can pick the school for your child. So if the particular schools that are assigned to Sapphire don't check off your boxes, all right, you have other options. As long as your child has transportation to and from school, they can request to attend any of Garland's campuses. Like I mentioned, Kayhoff's homes at Sapphire Bay are different from a lot of their other homes. They're built in almost an Eastern Coast style, all right? The homes are all three stories high and built mostly with siding, little bit of stone, and not so much brick. Uh, buyers can choose from a variety of styles, from like a modern finish to almost more of a craftsman style. Many of the elevations also offer different balcony options as well. So even though they all have this three-story design, I am really impressed with the diversity. I will say that I didn't find their website particularly easy to use. It's hard to find a place where you can select by city or community other than clicking on the map, which scrolls in and out without much precision. Uh, they also don't give a whole lot of details on the different elevations of each of their floor plans, and it's easy to confuse floor plans and inventory homes if you don't know exactly what you're looking for. Now, that being said, it does provide community details and every home plan outlines its included features. Let's take a look at what the locals are saying about K. Havnanian. When it comes to Google reviews, they have almost all positive reviews for local communities. Uh, Heritage Ranch, 5.0 stars. Elevon, 5.0 stars. Montera, 5.0 stars. Creekshaw, 4.7 stars. Hightower Estates, 2.3 stars. Yelp, as usual, is not very helpful with a total of two reviews and only a one star rating. So not much to go on there. Uh, the Better Business Bureau, they do a little bit better with customer ratings giving K. Havnanian two out of five stars and the BBB themselves given the company a grade of A+. There weren't a whole lot of complaints though, okay? And that's important, that's a good thing to see. They only had 11 in the past three years and only four of those being in the last 12 months. One thing that impresses me about Kehov Nanian is their quality of construction. We already know that in October of 2023, Globe Newswire reported that they received two Department of Energy awards for building energy efficient homes. Plus, they report that Kehov Nanian builds the most zero energy ready homes in United States. In describing a Kehov community in Asbury Park, they report 0.5 inch OSB sheathing, synthetic house wrap, fiber cement, siding. So having a builder who uses both OSB plus a house wrap is rare in Dallas. Okay, so that is very nice. Okay, so good stuff on the inside, but we have to keep in mind the limited amount of site visits. So when it comes to your pre-occupancy inspection, right, your blue tape walkthrough, that becomes vitally important. Because remember, you haven't been on site watching the home gradually take shape. So when you head into that blue tape walkthrough, you need to be prepared to be very strategic because there is a lot you need to evaluate. Now, lucky for you, I made an entire video about the blue tape walkthrough that you can watch right here. In the meantime, Wendy out.